Happy Monday, everybody. It's the start of a brand new week. It's going to be a good week because God is a part of it. And I'm glad you're starting your week off with this devotion. Thanks for joining me once again. A quick housekeeping note. Our church board and myself discussed last night worship in our church building. We made the very difficult decision to cancel all in-person worship events and church events through Easter. This was a very hard decision to make because Easter Sunday is the, the biggest Sunday of our church year. However, we need to be mindful and we need to be wise in protecting ourselves. So at the earliest, the next time we'll see each other face to face would be April 19th, although it's very much still a wait and see. All of our Holy Week worship services you can find on our website, covenantgrafton.com, there'll be a Monday, Thursday service, a Good Friday service, and of course, a wonderful Easter service. And I'll continue to bring you these daily devotionals each and every day by noon. Today, I want to talk to you. My wife, Corey, and I have gotten into this really crazy and bizarre Netflix show. It's called The Tiger King. Have you seen this? It is all the rage right now as it's the most popular show in the United States and I think around the globe. More people are watching this show than anything else right now. And it is all kinds of bizarre, isn't it? If you've seen it, if you haven't seen it yet, it's on Netflix. It's called The Tiger King. And if this was not real life material, I don't think I would believe it. In fact, if they would make a fictional TV show about this stuff going on, I think I'd roll my eyes and I wouldn't believe half the stuff that I've been seeing. But it's about these big cat, uh, big cat shows and these big cat operations where they have tigers and they have lions and they have cougars and they have bears and they have snakes. And the main person in this reality TV show is a man by the name of Joe Exotic. And if that doesn't ring some alarm bells, that he goes by Joe Exotic. Um, but he's based in Oklahoma. And there's all kinds of crazy twists in this show. And I'm only three episodes in, so I'm only about half the way through. But... He's got this nemesis that lives in Florida, and his nemesis is trying to rescue these tigers and lions from these different types of shows that Joe Exotic's doing. And there's this whole backstory that maybe this woman in Florida killed her husband and fed her husband to tigers on her own. And I'll tell you, this show, it's crazy. It's bizarre, but... I'll also tell you, it's one of those shows that you watch an episode and, and you just want to see what's coming next. And I know I'm not the only one that's been drawn into this show. And I'll tell you, I was thinking last night, why do I find this show so fascinating? Because I do. And it's one of those shows that I can't wait to watch the next episode tonight. And Corey and I are already talking about, you know, what do we think is going to happen next? And you know, what is it about these types of shows that get people's attention, that people just can't wait to see what comes next? And I think there's a couple of things. I think, one, it's just, it's an interesting show, and it's bizarre, and people just want to see what happens next. But two, I think that it's our human instinct to be drawn to people that have problems in their life for lack of better words that we like to look at other people and we like to feel superior to them that we like to feel that our lives are in better shape than theirs that we we've got life figured out more than they do that our problems are less than their problems and when we see other people falter when we see other people fail and when we see the chaos going all around them that there's something inside of us and i think it's it's kind of a a sinful side of us that we feel drawn to that and i think many of us look at this and we like to feel superior to them now Connecting this with our faith. This is human nature. 
this human nature to feel that we are somehow superior to our neighbors, that we are somehow superior to other people. And when it comes to how God sees us, when it comes to how God sees the world, we like to be able to point at other people and say, well, God, you know, I know I've got my faults and I've got my own problems in life, but you know, at least I'm not Joe Exotic, or, you know, at least I'm not, you know, this person that's in the midst of an affair, affair or at least, you know, I, I have never been, you know, whatever it might be, and we can prop ourselves up, and we can make ourselves feel superior, we can make ourselves feel that, you know, we're, we're somehow righteous in our own capabilities, and in God's Word, there is this remarkable passage that really cuts to the heart of in those moments that we feel that somehow we are better than other people and God's word has this to say about that in Romans 3 starting in verse 21 apart from the law the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Did you catch that? All fall short of the glory of God. All of us. All of us have faults. All of us have sin. All of us have parts of our lives that, you know, if the rest of the world would know about us and about the things that we've done, we'd be terribly ashamed. And the truth is that, that God sees all of our faults. God sees all of our, our, our shamefulness. God sees all, all the missteps and all the, the ugliness of our lives. And yet, here's the beautiful part. And here is the gospel, that God sees this. And God still loves us. God forgives us. And God sent his son Jesus Christ into this world to die for us because of how much God loves us, that God wants to take that sin from our lives. And, and God each and every day wants to remind you that he loves you. And he wants to wrap you in his love and he wants to wrap you in his grace. And, you know, we can look at other people and we can judge them and we do judge them. And, and yet even God loves those people, that God loves everybody. And God wants everybody to um, come into that embrace and to come into that grace. And so today, may you be reminded, one, that you are a sinner and that you have faults just like everybody else. But two... That even though you are a sinful person, and I'm not sure what you've got going on in your life and, and what type of struggles you've got going on and what type of sin you've got in your life and, and shamefulness that you've got in your life, despite all that, hear the good news. God loves you. God forgives you. God wants to give you grace upon grace. Amen.